Hello, everybody. Sorry, it took me a second to get on here. I am happy to see you today. I hope that you are going to love my project for today. I'm really excited to share it with you. Okay, I have to get my stamp and lips on. So we are going to do a really cute little Christmas tree. And you can do this as a card, as an ornament, um, as a tag, um, whatever you want. It's so much fun and you can do it with any color combination really. It's gonna be awesome. So I'm really excited to share this with you. And you have most likely everything you need. The only thing you might not have is like uh, watercolor paper, but it is so fun. So uh, I'm going to dive right in and show you and then we can play longer. Um, <laughs> so I hope you're going to love this. And I've got some fun little kind of tips and tricks along the way um, to share with you. So I hope you're going to love this. And um, shout out where you're from. I see Beth Ann and Diane. Ooh, Diane is from Australia. How cool. And Norma and Patricia and Ann and Sonia and Donna and Debbie. All right. It's awesome to see you. Hello, Sharon. Sorry. Can you, don't I look like I'm reading through my progressive lenses? <laughs> my old eyes require assistance. <laughs> so I'm so excited that you guys are here with me today. I don't normally go live on my Facebook group, um, but I wanted to just pop on here and check this out or show you this not check this out. I'm the one showing this to you. Show this to you here. Um, just because I know I don't always catch everybody on YouTube, but I will be putting this up on YouTube for those of you that are there. Now, this is part of my 12 Days of Christmas series. And if you are interested in getting the 12 Days of Christmas emails sent to you, there's one every day you can join my email list. And to do that, just go to my blog or once this video is over, I'll put a link in there. Um, I also have one pinned to my Facebook page where you're watching this from. I'll show you what it looks like because um, that's where the magic comes from. Let's see. So up at the top of my page, there's like featured posts. So like, here's my live from this past week, I think. Oops, that's not what I want though. Um, and then there's this little, oh, sorry, this little uh, picture. It's in the pin to the features. If you click on that, you can join my email list. So if you already get my emails, you should be getting, or you should have four days already. And then today I'll put up, once we finish this, I'll um, put that in an email out to you. So uh, I hope you love this. Now, of course, if you would love to purchase any of the items that I'm using today, you can buy them in my online store and I would be so grateful for your business. I have all kinds of perks for my, um, for my, uh, customers and I would love to welcome you to my VIP program. Um, okay. Also just a note, I am live Mondays at 5 PM central time, which is two hours from what right now, um, it, on YouTube. So I'm always on YouTube live on Mondays. Okay. So I wanted to show you a fun little technique, um, that I, learned recently and actually I'm going to flip my <laughs> um I'm going to flip my camera so you can see what I'm talking about okay oh sorry the flippies in a different spot on here there we go okay <laughs> 
All right. So um, make sure you like this. And if you wanted to share it, you certainly could on the Facebook. That would always be awesome. Okay. So I'm going to start with a piece of watercolor paper. This particular piece is three and three quarters by five, but you can start with just a scrap if you want. Um, you can do this with washi tape or with um, regular old like magic tape. The magic tape sometimes rips on um, watercolor paper, but sometimes not. It's kind of catch and touch and go. So if you have, this is some old, old, old washi tape. So if you have old washi tape, that works really well for this too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little triangle on here. And um, let's see, like this. And I, by the way, I'm not, um, I'm not trying too hard to get this on here. Just make it a triangle. Okay. And then I have a little towel here and I'm going to use my water painter to do a little water coloring. Okay. And you can do whatever colors you want. Um, I am going to bring in my clear, this is like a big background stamp block, size block, and I'm going to use this as my palette. And then I'm just going to put some reinker on here. And so I've got some lemon lime twist. Um, I'm going to put down some granny apple green. Some garden green. And some shaded spruce. So I just want kind of a range of greens. You could add um, mossy meadow if you wanted, old olive if you wanted. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. Just a range of greens for our Christmas tree. And then we'll, we'll try uh, some alternative colors. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure you have water. So uh, I use water in a little jar here to do this. Um, and I'm just going to mix, mix my reinker with some water because we don't want it to be full strength. We want it to be a little bit loose. Now, um, you can do this lots of different ways. So we'll try different, a few different ways, but I'm going to just start with some kind of curved lines. Okay. So I'm just kind of going down the line with my lightest color. And then you can see, I you can have lighter and darker areas. Okay. And I got a little aggressive with the water, so I'm just going to pick some of that up, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, then I'm going to go on to my next darkest color, which is Granny Apple Green. And again, colors don't really matter that much. And then I'm overlapping a little bit. I'm going in between a little bit. Okay, so just going down the line. And this kind of looks like a tree. Now we're going to get into some greener green. And so I've got some Granny Apple, or no, I'm sorry, we did Granny Apple. This is Garden Green. Again, mixing with a little bit of water. Okay, cleaning my brush in between. And then our last color is definitely the darkest, which is our shaded spruce. Okay, so I just kind of want to fill this in. And if I can see the lines, great. If they're kind of all jumbled together, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. Um, also, try not to do what I just did, which is go outside the lines. <laughs> but we'll, fi we'll fix that. I've got a way to fix that in a minute. Okay, so here we go. This is all on here. I've got a little bit of a puddle up here. So I'm just going to kind of soak that up with my brush. Because we don't want too much water on here. And then we're impatient here at the Creativity Cave. So I'm just going to heat my, uh, my tree up with my uh, heat tool because I can't wait, it takes too long. So welcome everybody, if you're just joining in. We're just doing a little watercolor with re-inkers. 
Okay, we almost have it. Sometimes we have to like dab to make this happen. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to pull this off. And well, actually, yeah, I'll pull it off. Now you can reuse your washi tape. So keep it handy. Okay, so there we go. You can see I splotched all kinds of stuff on here. I made a mess, but that's okay because I'm just so excited about it. Now we can have fun with this and decorate it a little bit. So I thought it would be fun to take, um, we've got a couple different, we've got these um, metallic effects. Um, and then we also have the pearlized enamel effects. They're basically the same thing, just different sets of them. Okay, so I'm gonna use this um, gold one. And I was like taking like a little scrap and just trying things out, um, get a feel for how fast stuff comes out and all of that kind of thing. So I'm just going to decorate my tree here with some dots like this. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so then um, you can see these make kind of dimensional dots. So they're, there's a little dimension to them. And I mentioned I had a way of getting rid of these. So there's a couple things you can do on watercolor paper. First, you can take clean water. So make sure your brush is clean. And you can go over that spot and basically erase it with clean water. So that just kind of definitely took it down a notch. Same with up here. We'll do the same thing. Um, it some it kind of depends on what color you have. Some colors will basically erase completely and other colors uh, will mostly erase. It depends. So that got rid of them pretty good. The other thing that I like to do, and this is kind of my favorite thing, is you want a pretty wet brush. Okay, so it's pretty wet. And I'm just going to pick up some color and you can do this with a couple different colors too if you want. And I'm just gonna tap it against my hand and that gives me little spritzes. And then you won't notice <laughs> what's on there at all. And look at how fun that is. Plus it's cool looking, right? So that's fun. Okay, so I think this is super cute. Um, now I can also take and put a little star up here. So let's see how good we are. I'm just literally going to draw an elementary school star and just try and kind of figure it out. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Aww. So cute. Okay, and then um, I have a little stamp. and I don't know if I left enough room. I think so. Um, I'm going to stamp this. Now I think I will use shaded spruce on here. like so. And this says Making Spirits Bright and it's from the Joy of Noel stamp set. And we'll just put that at the bottom. Ah, isn't that cute? So cute. Okay. So there's our first little, our first little um, attempt. Now I'm going to take a smaller piece and I'm going to do the same thing. Now this time I thought it would be fun to do maybe a slightly less traditional color. So I'm gonna grab my, well, I'm gonna actually grab new washi tape because these are so much smaller. So I'll show you why I chose this size. By the way, it is two and an eighth by three and three eighths. And like I said, I'll explain the size here in just a second. but I'm just leaving some room at the bottom. Now with this, I'm gonna do a completely different color combo. Uh, I'm gonna do some pinks. So I'm gonna do bubble burst and, or bubble bath and berry burst. Oh my goodness, I was like combining the two of those. Okay, so I don't have my re for this. In fact, I think 
I'm gonna go grab myself a clean water painter too. This is actually the smaller one that comes in this set. And um, I'm just going to randomly put color down. Doesn't have to be even or in a pattern or anything like that. I'm just adding color to this triangular shape and letting the color bleed and blend together. You can add water, you can do all kinds of stuff. Now, if you're feeling fancy, I mean, who isn't feeling fancy from time to time? You can also take and add a little salt to this. Now my personal favorite, and this box, by the way, has lasted approximately a million years, is some Morton's coarse kosher salt. Okay, so it's kind of got, it's, you know, thicker than like um, table salt, but we're just going to sprinkle some of that on here like that. Okay, now this, we're going to have to let sit for a hot second. By the way, I'm going to put this, oh, where can I put this? <laughs> I have a handful of salt. I know I can stick it somewhere. Where can I stick it? I guess I'm just going to put it on this piece of vellum. There we go. Because we're going to maybe use some more in a minute. All right, so I'm going to kind of have myself in a little pickle here because I want to get this off and this one we have to let dry kind of normal by the way I am going to add a little more color to this sometimes the salt really sucks the color right out <laughs> literally but you can you can tap some back in okay now if you're doing this where you're adding color back in be careful because you don't want to add salt to your ink pad because I don't think that's going to do you any favors. Um, so just make sure you rinse your brush out, you know, pretty pretty well before you go back into your ink pad. You just don't want to do anything to damage it. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside and we'll come back to it. It will take a while to dry, like 10, 15 minutes. All right, so we should play some more, right? <laughs> Um, I love blues for Christmas colors, so I'm going to take and do some blues with my bigger piece here. And one of the things I love about um, watercolor is that it's really, you just let the watercolor do its, its little thing and just let it, let it be, you know what I mean? Like, if you have something very, very specific in mind, you will probably be disappointed by watercolor. But if you just want the pretty watercolor effect, then you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take some Azure Afternoon, some Coastal Cabana, and da, 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 let's see, ooh, maybe some blueberry bushel. Okay, so these are kind of a good range of blue colors. Um, and you can use reinkers again. I just I didn't have these reinkers pulled, so I'm gonna use my ink pads and squeezing the lids. Now if you struggle with the lid, don't you worry. You can either use reinkers like I did on my block, or you can actually tap your block onto your ink pad onto the surface to pick up the color. It doesn't matter. Now, usually when I watercolor, I like to start light and work my way dark. Um, I just feel like that's the best, the best way to go about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pick up a color. Remember, I'm always adding a little bit of water to this. Otherwise, you can get kind of some funky things happening. And I'm just going to um, do a line across here. And then I'm going to pick up my next color and do another line. And I'm going to be really close, but I'm not going to quite touch the, the last spot. If I touch it, they will bleed together, which is fine. But in this case, I want some stripes on here. Okay, and I should uh, put a little water in this because it's going to be dark. But that's okay. 
Again, getting really close to the last color, but not actually touching. Okay, so then I'll just repeat what I just did. Now, if you do touch it, it's not the end of the world. It will just bleed a little bit, depending on how much water you have. It may bleed a little or a lot. And kind of the colors, some colors are a little different than others. Oh, I keep forgetting to put, <laughs> watch the comments. Sorry. Hold, please. Let me um, hop on here. Oops. Okay. Okay, make sure the volume is down because who wants to hear that? Okay. So if you're just coming in, say, say hello. Let us know what you think. All right, so I just did Azure Afternoon, and I will continue on with Blueberry Bushel. And we'll do a thin, kind of a thin line here. And then once again, we'll add some Coastal Cabana, the color that lets us know God loves us. Because why wouldn't we? I mean, seriously. It's the best. Okay, so we've got our stripes on here. This is still kind of wet, so I'm just going to pull off some of that water so it'll dry in this century. Okay, now at this point, you could leave it like this, or you could add something fun to it. If we want to add something fun, we just want to make sure it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off a little bit. And it, this doesn't have to be bone dry, just fairly dry. Okay. Um, sometimes it's crucial that it's bone dry, bone dry, and this is not one of those situations. Okay, so I'm going to take, um, I think on my blueberry stripes... I'm going to add a little bit of, um, I'm just going to add little circles to the blueberry piece. And I need a little bit, um, <laughs> don't do what I'm doing. Um, I need a little darker color than what I have. Otherwise, what's happening is, you can see, I'm going to redo this, is it was a little too wet for what I was about to do. Is it, I made splotchy marks which sometimes that's fun but that's not what we're going for here so let's I just recolored over it to even it back out we're going to make sure it's actually dry this time so maybe bone dry is a little more important than I let on earlier okay that should be good all right and good and dry. Okay, I'm going to take and just pick up some more of this color and do little circles. There we go. This is working. So you kind of want it to be a more concentrated color than what the stripe is. Okay, so remember we watered down our, our paint a little bit before we started and we want to get kind of some little dots on here and I'm I'm being pretty careful to stay within the stripe all right so we did that one and then let's do another one down here so I'm going to just add and this stripe started out a lot lighter so this is easier to do And you can see there's a little bit less bleeding on this one because I think it's a little drier than that top one was. But you get the idea. 
it's just kind of fun to add these little circles. So just play around with some texture. Now we can also do some fun things um, with markers. So um, I can add stuff to this with a marker. So I'm gonna take my Coastal Cabana marker. Oh, I can pull it out. All right, and I'm going to just do some open circles. So we had kind of solid circles, so here I'm gonna do open circles. And again, I'm staying within the, the stripe that I painted. So much fun. I find this is really relaxing. I don't necessarily have anything planned. Sometimes it's just, let's see what happens. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then for our last stripe, oh yeah get this one down here. Don't forget about this one. Now if you don't have washi tape you can also use painter's tape or masking tape. Like I said um, even that magic tape works. Sometimes it can rip. I'll sh give you some tips on how to keep it from ripping in a minute. Okay, so that's fun. Um, and then, let's see, what color do we have? This is blueberry bushel, right? No, azure afternoon. Azure afternoon. Um, ba -ba -ba. Where is, oh, here's my azure marker. Okay, so now I'm gonna try and do something kind of fun. I'm just going to draw some little wavy lines to kind of contrast all of these dots we've got. Okay, so there we go. All right, let's close these up before there's a situation. <laughs> I'm still a little disappointed these bled a little bit, but that's it's just kind of the nature of this. Okay, so I'm going to pull this off. Now if you're worried about ripping, what do you see how I'm pulling this, you know, like just back like that and not much ripping happens. Then what you do with this, by the way, is just stick it to something and if you don't want to stick it to your desk, you could stick it to like a stamp case or um, a sheet of plastic or something like that so you can use it again because you can get lots of uses out of this washi tape, but I'm peeling it back at that strong angle. And then look at this super cool um, Christmas tree that we have. All right. So once again, I can take and add a little sentiment to this. Um, so let me know if you like what you've seen so far. See, I'm looking for, ooh, I'm going to go with my go-to Christmas, Merry Christmas, which is from Berry Cute. I just love this one. It just works, if you know what I mean. Okay, and I'm going to stamp it in blueberry bushel, because that's kind of my darkest color here. like so. And then if you want, you can do that technique where we um, did some spritzing because gosh, I love that. Just love the look. And then it hides any imperfections really nicely, which will kind of help with the fact that I don't like that super a lot. Okay. So you just want to tap it 
you want to be a little light. It's like right now I'm getting more water than pigment and I want the pigment on here. There we go. Okay. Now, if you get a big blob like that, you can get rid of it if you want. And like that kind of did our lines in a little bit. It's all good. Love, love, love. Okay. Um, let's, let's see. This one is still really wet, so we're just going to let it sit. All right. I think I've got some more paper cut. Let me see. Here we go. Okay, so ooh, this one, let's do... Um, let's do... Another... I'm trying to get these relatively even. I'm also trying to get it so that there's a little room at the top for a star. Okay, I think that one's pretty good. Um, what colors should we use on this next one? Let me know in the comments. Pink, blue, and green. Mm. Pink, blue, and green. Let's see. That could work. Pink, pink with blue and green can create brown so that is the only thing that makes me hesitate pink and red that's a good suggestion um how about we do some different shades of pink pink um pink and red yeah let's try some different shades of pink okay so I'm going to go back here and, ooh, ooh, I have, I have an idea. This is getting fancy. And if you're not feeling the fanciness of this, you don't, you don't have to do it, but I kind of like the idea. So I'm just doing some kind of curvy lines, curvy wiggle lines. Maybe we'll go a little crazy here. And maybe this will be stupid. You never know. That's part of playing is being willing to be stupid. So now I've got red. And just doing kind of wavy lines. I think this is just going to end up being kind of a background. This didn't do exactly what I was kind of thinking in my head. I didn't start out quite right, but that's okay. So there we go. Ooh, Joy said Calypso, coral and petal pink. That is a good color. Remember? Let's 
my paste. I'm drying this off a bit. And then, woo! I think I'm gonna do some more stripes with my red. That are a little just a little darker on here so I can kind of see them a little bit more because one thing with watercolors are you can definitely layer of up the color okay so now I can kind of see those wavy lines a little bit more and that's kind of fun star right here and not my ribbon scissors I'm gonna snip this apart now this star came from oh where did it come from this is from the set of word dies that we have like there's a get feeling feel better soon um wanted to say dies okay so there's the star die that's in there it's it's like four or five stars connected and I'm just cutting this apart all right so I can glue dot this at the top which is fun Okay, and then we're going to add to this here in just a minute. But for right now, I'm going to let this dry completely. Still wet. This could take some time. But when it's dry, it's going to be really cool. Um, that one might have to be a check it out later situation. I'm just saying. Okay, let's do... What do we have so far? We've got a green one, a blue one, a red one, and a pink one. Someone mentioned pe petal pink and calypso coral, so I think I'm going to try that. Now, this, I feel, is kind of done. So we're going to pull out some fresh tape. And... Do another. Because it's just is so much fun to experiment with this. Okay, now this one could, well, let's just see here. This could be fun for stripes, but um, stripes that touch. So we can see what happens when we, when our stripes touch. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little water to this and get a nice stripe. And then I'm going to add some water to this. And I'm going to leave a little space between, especially on that first one. But then on this next one, I'm going to just kiss the next line slightly. Okay, so it's really close, but now I'm just going to let it kiss. And when I do that, there's going to be some bleeding that happens between. I don't know if you can see that. It's just, it's, it's pretty subtle. But do you see that right there? Ooh, it's bleeding. So that's kind of kissing, which is a little different than how we normally say kissing, or how kissing is done in stamping. That's usually when you put a solid stamp to a detailed stamp and pull the pattern out. Okay, so then I let it touch. And sometimes it's interesting, like in this case, I'm seeing 
the petal pink is going into the calypso coral versus the you know the opposite which, which is what i kind of expected to have happen all right and you can see i kissed it over here so it's not in the same spot every time and sometimes i like to kind of get my row going and then sort of decide where to kiss it later <laughs> And you can kiss it in more than one spot too. So I kind of touched it here in the corner a little bit. And it just kind of depends. This is again, so fun to play with what's gonna happen. And like there, not much is happening. You just never know. Okay, and then we'll finish this up with a little bit more petal pink. And I kissed it in like three spots. Let's see if something good happens. And sometimes you might have to encourage things to happen a little bit. So for instance, I kind of got a little more, a little higher concentration. I can kind of dab that on there and see if it'll flow in. It just, you just never know what might happen. Okay, so look at that. Kind of fun little touches on here. And it's all, it's all good. Now, of course, you can add to this. Um, I showed you where I use some markers and some just paintbrush and reinker to decorate the stripes. You can also use die cuts or stamped images. If you're gonna do that, just make sure everything's real dry before you uh, um, attempt that. Um, but now I can pull this up and I love the nice sharp lines. Sometimes if you've used your washi tape a few times, the crispness of the line is lost. So it just kind of depends. But isn't that fun? I love kind of the different, the different look for this. Um, you can also embellish this with, um, with embellishments because we, of course, have lots of embellishments to choose from. So let me dry this off. Okay. Sometimes I heat the back side of my paper because that you can see is flattening it out, which is helpful. Okay, that's pretty dry. So um, I feel like my iridescent rhinestones would be perfect for this. I am such a sucker for iridescent rhinestones. They just make me happy. So I can put kind of some bigger ones at the bottom and then I'll move up to the smaller ones up top. Like so. Maybe one more big one down the bottom. Like that. And I guess I need one more. Uh, there. Uh, maybe another one. This could get dangerous, right? <laughs> oh, stop flipping on me. Yeah. Pretty good. There. <laughs> uh, but that one's fun. 
Um, I'm going to clean my stamp off so I can add my sentiment to this. Now you can certainly draw in like a little um, tree trunk, but do we really need a tree trunk on a tree that is Calypso Coral and Petal Pink? I'm going to argue no, not necessary. Ooh, you know what? I should have done this in Sweet Sorbet ink, but oh well, here we are. Not the end of the world, but Merry Christmas. Okay, so we can turn that into a card. Um, here, I wanted to do some of these brushed metallic dots in gold, because I think that would be pretty awesome. And of course, it would go nicely with our gold uh, star. <laughs> gold star for Dina. And I actually, you know, I wasn't sure about this one, but I kind of like how it ended up turn, turning out not bad. Now, I know none of you are at home fresh out of embellishments, so this is a good way to use up a bunch of things. Kind of fun. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. This one you might recall we put the stuff on. It looks like it's still kind of wet, so I don't want to touch it because you know that's how you ruin things. Then let's look at our salt. Ooh, I think our salt is dissolving on here. Let's give it a little encouragement to dry. Normally I really don't like um, adding water to this, but I really want to show you the cool thing we can do with this. So this one is, um, this one had, let's see, this was our Berry Burst and, and Blushing Bride, and then it was wet, just kind of mixed, no, no pattern or anything, and then we added our Kosher Salt on top of this and allowed it to dry. And so I'm going to pull my tape off of this one. And then when it's dry, the salt should just kind of fall off. Sometimes you have to brush it off. I'm just gonna tap it in my little garbage. Um, I just want to be careful because if it's still wet, I don't want to get the I don't want to get that on the background and make a mess. Okay, but what this leaves behind is just kind of cool color and texture. That's what's left behind, which is really kind of fun. Okay, now let's show you, let me show you what you can do with this. And I got this little um, frame from the Amazon. Now I ordered another style of them, but they're not here yet. Um, so it's just got water in it. But the thing I don't like about this is it looks like the water is a little cloudy. So you can't see through it super clearly, but um, here is my my little piece. And then it says Mary at the bottom, and the Mary is from Christmas Classics. The word Mary in red, but it's not settling quite perfectly. But anyway, so this was just one uh, tree that I did a while ago. So all that you have to do is pull this out of the back carefully. I just didn't want to break my fingernail in here because as you can see I already have enough issues. <laughs> okay so um, this was a tree I did earlier but you can just fit that piece in there and then it makes a really fun little background. I will link to this um, later on for you so you can see where I got this but like I said I think whatever liquid is in here is like kind of cloudy I don't know it seems weird because the plastic seems pretty clear to me I just don't know what this liquid is that's in it probably 
I don't know. But anyway, so there you go. Oh, there you can see Mary now. Kind of just a fun, a fun little thing. So you can make, like I said, an ornament um, out of this. You could make a little picture frame, you know, with one of these larger ones. Uh, you can make cards out of them. So all kinds of different options. So let me bring in what we've made. Now I will turn these into cards and then I'll share I'll share that PDF with you. Um, and honestly, I might not do it till tomorrow. I'm actually not feeling very good. <laughs> so, um, I think I'm going to rest up and then I'll send these a little later because I just, oh, my, my tummy is not feeling good at all. So anyway, um, but here are a bunch of Christmas trees that we made, and they're really fun. So I would encourage you to give this a try. Now, watercolor paper is really important for this process to work well. If you don't have watercolor paper, you're not going to get the results like this. It, it, it will be kind of a mess, to be honest. Watercolor paper is key here. So give it a try. Um, use your reinkers course if you have actual watercolors that works great too um, but just so much fun and um, like I said I will turn these into cards and um, send the PDF for my 12 days of Christmas list so if you're on my list meaning you've been getting emails for the first four days so far this December you will get these tomorrow um, like I said if I feel better I'll come and do them but oh, I'm just ugh, I'm not feeling so good right now Anywho, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. If you watch this later, just give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think. And then I will also put this on YouTube later as well. So happy stamping, my friends. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you soon. Bye.